It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 190, entitled Plumbing New Christmas Depths. It was recorded on Monday, the 20th of December, 2021. My name is Nathan Wrigley, and as always, I am joined by several notable WordPress guests, the first being the co-host, Michelle Frechette, but I'm also joined by Anne McCarthy and Zach Tyrrell. It's the last show before Christmas. We're taking a couple of weeks off and we'll be back in early January. But as always, there's plenty of WordPress things to be discussed. First up, we talk about the state of the word address, which was given by Matt Mullenweg in New York last week. Our guest, Michelle, well, she was there, so we've got lots and lots to talk about. We also talk about the next generation of WordPress theme authors. Justin Tadlock's piece in WP Tavern mentions that maybe all editing will be done inside the WordPress UI. Well, we'll see. There's also a new block theme called Alara, which is going to release 52 new variations, block patterns and so on, in the year to come. We also talk about David Guire, who has a block theme generator app, which looks like a really curious and easy way to make block-based themes. Tenop have got a new tool, which allows you to publish a media kit. There was the Log4j catastrophic problem on the internet this week. We briefly touched that. And then towards the end, a little bit more lighthearted, we have the Grumpy Designers 2022 preview, which raises a little bit of a smile. There's a lovely tool called Keyframes app, which will help you make some CSS animations. And we also have a look back on the Kubrick WordPress theme. It's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Hello. Good evening. Good morning. Good welcome. Good welcome. There's a new phrase for you. <laughs> <laughs> that must be British. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> like happy Christmas. Spiffing. I don't know where you come up with that yeah. one either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off to a good start then. Um, we are doing the This Week in WordPress show. We do this each Monday. Actually, that's not true because as the holiday season is coming up, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off. So this is our this is our final little show before the holiday season properly begins. And you'll see that I'm joined by three guests today. Um, we are joined for the very first time by Zach Tyrrell. We're joined once more by Anne McCarthy, and I'll do their introductions properly in just a minute. Um, but I am joined by this week co-host Michelle Frechette who has had a incredibly busy week wouldn't you say so Michelle? I've had a couple of weeks that have been very crazy I've been traveling all over so we'll, yeah. we'll dive into that maybe a little later. We will but Michelle uh, being a yes. sort of co-host here do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. So I'm Michelle Frechette. I am the Director of Community Engagement at Stellar WP which is over a lot of brands including the um, events calendar, which Zach, I'm sure, will be talking about in a moment. And we get to work together on that project, which is pretty exciting. And we were both recently in San Antonio talking about um, how to move the events calendar and some of our other products forward. So along with that, I do a lot of other things in the WordPress community, podcasts, having fun, and generally trying to be as helpful as possible. I predict in about 30 seconds time, somebody's going to wander past with a coffee, but I could be wrong. We'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> He just locked in the door, so it might be a few okay, more than a, it, than a two minutes. seconds. Yeah, give it a little bit more time. Um, but yes, welcome for the first time, Zach. It's really nice to have you. Uh, I'll just do the introduction, the brief bio that you gave us. So Zach, Zach is the general manager of the events calendar, iconic and orderable over at Stella WP. Um, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, sure. Uh, I've been in the WordPress ecosystem for a super long time as well, having, I think, attended the second WordCamp way back in the day. So uh, I've been quietly in WordPress for a long time, been managing the events calendar for, for six years before uh, recently being acquired. Well, recently, it's a whole year now, uh, being acquired by Liquid Web and, and being part of this whole formation of Stellar WP, which, uh, which obviously Michelle is a big part of as well. That's great. Thank you very much. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on. Hopefully, first of many, um, many journeys on this week in WordPress. Yes, so glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. And finally, last but by no means least, Anne, Anne McCarthy, a returning member of the show. Um, she is, of course, the developer relations wrangler at Automatic. She's focused on the full site editing outreach program, and she makes videos for the state of the word address <laughs> on, a, on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Her voice sounds Very familiar for some reason. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was so good. You got there was so much Adam McCarthy in that. It was great. <laughs> I, I know. I was surprised you were in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to. The designers did the demos. I just did the voiceover and the script. So oh, okay. mad props to the folks there. But yeah, they basically need someone last minute to do. I was like, all right, writing the script. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anne, Anne works incredibly hard for the uh, the project, oh, but um, specifically around the full site editing and the outreach program. We'll get on to the state of the word business as probably our top news item this week in just mm-hmm. a moment. But just a couple of things. If you are joining us then um, and you want to make a comment, then you can do that. If you are at one of these two locations, this would be the, the two places really to go. It would be wpbuilds.com forward slash live. And if you go there, then you'll be logged into Google because it's it's YouTube comments. You'd need to be logged into Google for that. And if you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook, that's our Facebook group. And you would need to authorize Restream, which is the platform that we use. Um, if you want us to see your name and avatar, go to chat.restream.io forward slash FB if you want that to happen. But we'd really welcome any comments that you want to make or just general chit-chat is always really nice. Uh, let's see if anybody has them so far. Oh, Rob. Rob Cairns. Rob! Yeah. Check it out, Rob. Look at this, right? Honestly, this arrived. Hang on, make sure this is... A... Rob sent me a Christmas card. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Oh. Rob, thank you. I've got it here because so I literally, literally opened it just a minute ago. Look at that. There's Rob. Oh. Rob's Christmas. I, I was going to say thank you in an email or something, which is highly impersonal compared to what you did. But thank you so much, Rob. I really appreciate that. So like I said, um, put your comments in. We'll try to put as many on as we can. Now, dare I do it? This is the thing. Dare I? Shall I? I'm going to go for it. It's our pre-Christmas episode. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Is that too much for the for those of you that are At listening? Least... Yeah, I know. Sorry, I'm... he didn't put us in a snow globe with a snow falling yeah. over our faces, so we yeah. have that so, to be thankful for. Um, myself and Zach are now surrounded by blue. Uh, what are those things even called? Snowflakes. snowflakes. And Polly yeah. and Anne and Michelle are. Their names are both covered up, and they've got little <laughs> snow bluffs and some Christmas trees. I, I'll see how long I can cope with that, but that, I thought that'd be quite fun. Okay, it's probably long enough. Yes, let's <laughs> take it off. There we go. There's one. There's one for the end. Uh, but there we go. Just a bit of Christmas flavour. I was going to wear a hat and then forgot. Never mind. Right, let's get on with the sort of WordPressy stuff for this week. Where am I going? That's the WP Builds website. We don't want to see that. Let's get to this one. There is an awful lot this week, which is coming straight out of the WP Tavern. Um, Sarah and Justin, I hope that's all right with you. But there's a the first piece that I want to mention today is, of course, the State of the Word Address, which took place last week. I've actually forgotten what day it was on, Michelle. What day was it? Tuesday. It was last was Tuesday. It? Okay, so it was last Tuesday. I watched it. Um, I watched the. I was only available to watch the actual bit where Matt spoke, and as soon as that bit had finished and the the Q and A portion began, I had, I had to step away. So if there was anything, uh, if there was any juicy nuggets that came up in the Q and A, we should mention those. But really, this is just to introduce the fact that the state of the word passed this week. Matt Mullenweg stood on stage in New York. I believe it was the old Tumblr building or something along those lines, and uh, and gave gave a sort of summation of what what's happened during the last year. Um, I don't really want to paraphrase it because there's probably too much in there. What I really want to do is go round and ask you individually, one at a time, what your takeaways were. Um, I do want to point this piece out, though, on post status. That's a lovely picture. Really great angle. Fabulous photography there. Um, and I think you took it, didn't you, Michelle, that picture? I did. I did. You were yes, right was... there. I was there in the front row. If you scroll down a tiny bit, I think mine is the first take of the. Yep, there I am. Yeah. So, Michelle, so was... would you mind kicking us off? What what was what was your experience like? I mean, you can talk about the actual words that Matt spoke, but if you want to tell us about what the experience was like as well, that could be fun for a minute or two. The experience was amazing. So I, I received an email inviting me to the state of the word. And at that point, just assumed that everybody in WordPress got an invitation and we would kind of go into a lottery. And then I discovered very quickly that I didn't know anybody else that had been invited. <laughs> and everybody else had an <laughs> opportunity to apply. And um, I was just dumbfounded as to why I had been invited. But I was so grateful to um, not only have the opportunity to go, but then for Stellar WP to say, yes, we want you to be there. 
and to um you know to sponsor my trip out to uh to new york to do that and it was i think at the bottom of that i say i was a little bit like um cinderella that uh my lift was my pumpkin and you know all of my <laughs> friends that, that were there <laughs> We're my so footmen cool. because I do travel with a scooter. I am a mobility impaired. And so I had all of these people who truly were wonderful in helping me navigate um, getting around New York and being able to plug in my scooter wherever I could because it has a short, which I discovered three blocks away from the hotel. Oh. And <laughs> oh. couldn't get back. But they have these wonderful lifts where you actually get pulled right back into the in the back of these vans in your scooter. Mm -hmm. And so you don't oh, have to wow. take it apart and all of that. Yeah. It was great until the trip to the airport where I was in the back for an hour jostling back and forth in this oh. terrible van. But that's another story. But the state of the word was truly phenomenal. I arrived. You know, We showed our vaccination cards. Um, and because we were all vaccinated, you could choose to mask or not, which was nice because, you know, you could have actually see people's faces and have conversations. Literally two seconds in, I was handed a sparkling water with a lime slice in it. Matt walked over and, and said, hello, it was nice to see me. Mm -hmm. Josepha said, oh, I've got a space for you in the front row. I literally felt like the bell of the ball. And it was just an amazing, <laughs> amazing experience. Yeah, I, I could confess, you know, there was no jealousy at all uh, <laughs> from my part. Not a slightly, even small, tiny bit of jealousy. None, none whatsoever. Well, at all. I... None. <laughs> I 100% acknowledge that I was absolutely, um, you know, experiencing something that other people would have liked. And had I not been there, yeah. I would have been experiencing the jealousy and the fear of missing out that everybody else had. Um, and I do hope that I was able to bring as much of that experience to everybody else and, and my excitement. And I would never in a million years take an experience like that for granted because it really was one of those one of a kind experiences. Uh, the highlight for me, though, is that I did say to Matt at the end, I would love to get an interview with you. Uh, for post status and I'd like to talk about the acquisitions this year and so he said I'll give you three or four minutes which you which turned into about seven and a half minutes um, that I was able to audio record and we put, we did put that up on post status this past week um, and he was just truly gracious um, as he always is and I had a lovely conversation with him that's so nice no I was clearly trying to be a bit ridiculous I mean you know, I probably probably would have shown up if I'd been invited but I'm so pleased that you went and that you enjoyed Thank it you. so much in Thank terms you. of the talk Michelle as you were sort of sitting there mm. trying to uh, sort of take it all in and obviously on camera you've got to be alert and awake at all times you can't can't sort of do what I did you know go and grab a coffee halfway through and things like that what did you take out of it what were the most important points that you recall uh, I think one of the things that I that really there's two things that struck me. One was the future of Gutenberg is bigger than just WordPress, right? So I hadn't thought about Gutenberg being a project that could be outside of the WordPress ecosystem, and so that for me was something that was really eye opening. And then the other was, you know, questions that I asked and that Ali Nimmons asked about the future of WordPress. Um, I've noticed, and, and Anne's nodding, so I think maybe she's seen it too, but I've, I've noticed that I'm not seeing a lot of younger people come into being users and being contributors to WordPress. Yes, there are some, absolutely, but not in the amounts of people that I see that are my age and, and 30s and 40s. And so I wanted to make sure that the future of WordPress also takes into account the fact that we need to shepherd in the next generation if we're going to remain um, who we are and a part of the ecosystem, the the internet that we are as well. Yeah, it's so curious. My um, my children who are getting to the point where I was becoming, you know, interested in technology at the age that they have now reached, that they, they they don't have any conception of wanting to own it. They are totally happy pouring all of their stuff into these silos um, and not not having any ownership on it they, they see it as just a disposable commodity you know and 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 I'm trying to persuade them no 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 if you've got things that you want to say you want to be able to have it and it's yours and you can do what you like with it, including just removing it um, at some mm -hmm. point in the future but I, I feel that's well, going to be a, a hard battle I reached out to a woman who does a lot of social justice type of things on TikTok. And I said, you, if you want to have a blog to share what you do, I would happily build a blog for you for free because I like what you're doing. 
And she said, oh, I have TikTok. I don't need a blog. I said, until they shut you down, mm -hmm. until they silence your voice, you don't own your platform when you are relying on things like TikTok and Facebook and Twitter even. Um, other people can censor you because it isn't your platform. And so one of the things that I think is super important to remember is that with WordPress, especially .org, with self-hosted, you own your platform and nobody else can silence your voice. Yeah, and yeah. you see those TikToks all the time, right? You see those people mm -hmm. who are who are doing those follow ups after a video has been pulled or taken down, and every time that happens, I'm like, well, can't you just also own your platform? Like, don't can't you take that extra step and create a website where you could be like, well, if you want to see this video, go over here because I have it. I don't know. It just yeah. always surprises have... me that that there's that gap. One of my TikToks had the had the audio removed. So there I am talking and there's nothing there. And it was a stitch with a man who said, if you woke up tomorrow in the opposite gendered body, what's the first thing you'd do? And of course, people were making rude and crude remarks. And mine got shut down. All I said is, I'd make 27 cents less an hour. And <laughs> some man got so triggered by that, he reported, reported my him. audio and it got taken cool, cool, down cool. after it had hundreds of views, of course, right? So I'm like, oh my gosh, like I didn't swear. I didn't say anything terrible. There was no like, you know, trademarked music going. So yeah, so you don't own your platform unless you are somewhere like WordPress. I think the, well, sorry, please, Anne, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, like, one of the things I've been studying some G Gen Z research. So I'm 28 for context. I don't like sharing my age very often, but um, I am 28. <laughs> so I got involved with WordPress when I was 18. Um, so it's something I, I think about a lot and have a lot of friends who are younger. And one of the things that's very interesting about Gen Z and about friends of mine in that age range is that owning a platform isn't appealing. But what is appealing is um, until, of course, something happens to them, then, of course, they care about owning the platform. Uh, but what is appealing is this idea of open source. So like there's a lot of creep factor um, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, like all these platforms that increasingly there's this sense of um, like TikTok feed knows me better than I know myself. Like I don't want to give them my information. And there's a lot of movement actually around privacy and around um, does this platform align with my values? And so I actually think um, one of the ways that I would love to see WordPress spend more time um, investing in getting the next generation involved on WordPress is saying like, look, we literally can't track your data, like explaining the concept of open source yep. less yep. from the ownership yep. side, but from the value side, mm -hmm. because that actually really resonates with Gen Z where there's studies that have shown they will spend more money on products if that product is in line with their values and it's made in a way that is like ethical and transparent and open. I'm like, hello, WordPress. Like, <laughs> So every time I talk to friends mm. who are younger and explain that to them, it really resonates. And they're like, wait, what? Like, how do I get started? Like, there is very much something that clicks whenever you explain the concept of open source. But the problem is I can't spend 10 minutes talking to every single Gen Z or, you know, like, there's a <laughs> certain element of like, how do you scale that concept? But I do think once um, that concept resonates, there is a, a huge opening um, for folks to actually invest in these platforms because they, I think they will actually, in the same way they'll spend more money on a product, um, I think they will, they will tolerate more uh, fluctuations in the UX or a worse experience or, a, you know, not as streamlined where it's telling you leave your house in 10 minutes, you want to get to the airport on time um, because there will not be that creep factor. And I think that will actually be welcomed. So that's my hope. I've shared this with a bunch of folks who do marketing. I'm like, please <laughs> do something about this. But I've seen that that really, really resonates. Makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. My my take on that is my, my children seem to be, um, despite how easy it is for all of us to make WordPress exist, they still find that that barrier is more significant than they would wish. In other words, they simply download an app, type in an email address and a password, and they're good to go on these other platforms. And they, they feel that the, the barrier of setting it up and making it look as if you would like it to look. Um, and all of that is a little bit high. And so obviously things like you're doing with full site editing and hopefully will make that barrier lower than it ever has Especially been. Especially patterns. Yeah. Like I yeah. think having patterns where you can, you know, it's kind of like switching between themes. Yep. Yep. Um, I think that'll be huge. We've got a lot of that actually lined up to talk about later. So maybe maybe we'll we'll keep that one um, on ice just for now. But thank you, Michelle. That was nice sharing your thoughts about that. Um, yeah, Zach, sure. anything come out of the state of the word address that you, you were interested in? 
uh, you know, there's always a ton of interesting nuggets there. I'll I'll extract the one that uh, that my team was saddest about. Right, there's lots of great stuff in there, but uh, seeing the translations and kind of international work uh, pushed out to an undefined timeline was that was a little sad for us. We uh, in our business about. 40%, maybe 45% of our customers are international. So anything that can be done to help with translations and, uh, you know, multilingual, those are things that when it was first talked about, maybe in one of the early, early Gutenberg talks that, uh, that WordPress was going to take that on, we were really excited. And now it's been, you know, understandably, right. That's not a, not a situation where it's like, oh, I can't believe they delayed it. It's more like, ah, oh, that's disappointing because we're really, um, really excited about what that can mean uh, in terms of continuing to make WordPress really great for people who aren't uh, aren't writing or creating content purely in English. So uh, that was a sad thing. Overall, I think it was great. I, I love what I'm seeing with the full site editor. Um, that's, uh, that's all super exciting and interesting and uh, you know, we're tracking that really closely, especially with uh, with Cadence, which is the theme that that we work with very closely in terms of block editor support. So uh, lots of great stuff in there, I thought. Mm. OK, thank you, Zach. Um, and Anne, what, what was the <laughs> and you? I would imagine <laughs> I know what's going to come, but go for it anyway. Well, I'll try to avoid the obvious stuff. Oh, okay. that, I was so <laughs> I'm so knee deep in that that to me it's like not surprising. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I, of those things, I will say I love that you called out wanting like thousands and thousands of block themes. I thought that was really cool. Um, and it's really neat to see a call to that because I, I I agree. <laughs> you know, yeah, I he think, said something uh, like twenty five thousand or fifty thousand or 30, something. Didn't he? This yeah. big number, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. And I think style variations, if you can have like different style packs in the block theme, which is not currently possible, there's an open issue with some cool designs and some um, developers working on it that I think that will open up the door to make it really easy um, to bust out a lot of these themes and the more tools that come up for extenders, I think will also help. Um, but to me, the big call out, and I think this was recapped in the WP Tavern article was his call to stay humble and stay close to users. Um, I really appreciate that from someone in tech. And I, I do listen to a lot of other tech leaders who are not so humble. <laughs> and that's something I've always appreciated about Matt and about WordPress is that like we're all in it together, we're all figuring it out together. Um, and that there is such an emphasis um, on those things and like not turning into, you know, let's go visit the WordPress museum. You know, <laughs> like there's a certain, um, I loved that, that tagline. Um, and then the web three discussion, I thought he handled that really well. Um, and actually, I've been, you know, madly trying to read up on like Web3 and like, does it make sense? And how do I feel about it? And friends are asking me and um, the way he talked about how like WordPress is already living through um, a lot of the Web3 th Web principles, I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a good, a good reframe. Um, and yeah, just generally speaking, I think it was great that that was brought up and addressed. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to follow on from what Anne said? Yeah, I also like that they're bringing in and, and I know it's us, right? But I'm just saying they like the, the code part of things and the the higher up whatever, but the opportunity for more people to be involved in different ways. So like one of the things you talked about was, you know, the open verse part of things. And I, I just shared a, a link. Um, Nathan, that like you can contribute photos now, right? So you can contribute mm -hmm. photos that you agree to them to be open source, the, the photos that you contribute, anybody can use for whatever they want. And um, Angela Jin likes my photography. So she reached out to me in advance. She's like, can you help us seed this? And so I contributed like 200 photos and they picked whatever they wanted to include there so that when Matt talked about it, it wasn't like, well, there's no photos yet kind of thing. But hundreds of people have started putting photos into this directory because that's a way to contribute that you don't have to know code. You don't have to be a polyglot. You don't have to be a marketing genius. And you can still feel like I've given back and there's something that I can do there. Yeah, the for, for my part, thank you for um, mentioning that. For my part, mm -hmm. the, the open verse bit was actually really interesting. I really uh, quite excited about the whole open verse thing to be honest. I did a I did a podcast episode with a, a handful of automaticians so there was um, myself, Zach, Birgit and Marcus and we spent about half of the podcast talking about 5.9 and then the other half we spoke about open verse and I'm really curious as to some of the sort of blue sky thinking coming out of that and the the 
the thing that I'm really excited about with Openverse is imagine that there's a toggle switch in there where you just anything that you upload, you toggle the button on and it becomes part of the Openverse. So just by having things in your media library, I mean, maybe you could do it on a site-wide basis so that everything that you upload, unless otherwise specified, will become available under CC0 and therefore everybody's able to use it. But also the idea that it could become a repository for all sorts of things like block patterns and like theme.json files and all sorts of interesting things. And you could just go and get all of these things for free. I don't know quite how that would all bolt into your WordPress install, but it's just I just think it's a really remarkable uh, project. So Openverse was the bit that stood out for me. I love, I cannot wait for Openverse stuff to take off and, um, and align with the photo directory. I'm a huge, I love taking photos and submitted some as well. And both like all of these different ways of contributing, I think are so, so neat to kind of lower the barrier to entry and get people excited about open source and thinking about, um, creative commons in a different way. You know? Yeah. It, it just kind of feels like when the internet began, it felt like things like Openverse was the promise of the internet, that all that stuff was just going to be freely available and democratized. And, and we seem to be going in the opposite direction because, well, I guess money got involved and made it go in a slightly different direction. Let's not go into that. Um, but <laughs> I just I just love this project, and I'm so glad that, that Automatic have taken it on, and hopefully it will grow under their custodianship. So, yeah, the, the state of the word, there was an awful lot to say. We've just touched on a few items there, but there was obviously the, the, Web3, the Web3 stuff that uh, was mentioned. There was the translation stuff, which got mentioned. There was an obvious long demo of all the things that are going to be coming in 5.9 and then there was then there was this one the acquisitions one and this was another one that i wished to touch on because it was quite curious i've been covering the acquisitions because they happen well i mean it's it's nearly nearly half past two now and we haven't had one since about 1 30 this afternoon so we're expecting another one on the hour every hour that's what it feels like and i i genuinely don't know announcements from us today <laughs> Yeah, not today. What are you waiting for? Um, I genuinely don't follow the bigger picture. I don't really look at much in terms of tech and who's acquiring what. And Matt painted a picture where it felt like, actually, this is quite normal. If you look in at the bigger tech landscape where there were trillions and tri I think trillions was the right word. Trillions of dollars um, used this last year to acquire various things. And it's just shot up. The graph of things acquired last year is much bigger than the previous year, but this year it went absolutely bananas. And so that kind of made me feel a bit more sanguine about it. Just, okay, this is this is the way it's going and this is how it's happening in the wider wider tech world. Thought that was curious. Oh, actually, also, there's, the, there's the graph, look. Yeah. We're also an 18-year-old you know, ecosystem. And if you look at any ecosystem, there is um, a cycle that happens, right? So the, the first few years into maybe even up to 10 years, there really wasn't much money being changed um, within our ecosystem. People weren't selling products yet. It was, it was building the, rep the repo and things like that. You move past that and now people have started, you know, into, after the first 10 years, people have really started to make some money. There is an ecosystem, there's, there's money being changed. You can buy plugins, you can buy themes, you can do all of these things. And then beyond that, people have grown it to where they're ready to either go on and do something else, or it's so big now they want some help in managing their their business. And so I think it's just a natural part of the growth of what's happening in WordPress. Yeah. Yeah, I can say for certain, like I, the iconic acquisition that we did, James has been doing it for 10 years. He's been running Iconic and selling WordPress plugins and building all these things. And honestly, he was ready for a team. He didn't want to leave the Iconic project, but he wanted some coworkers and some people yeah, to yeah. collaborate with. So selling his business wasn't, it wasn't the end of something. It was him looking for you know, how, how can he build something bigger than that was just himself? Uh, and mm. I've seen that pattern over and over with uh, certainly all or almost all the acquisitions I've been involved with this year, which is numerous. Yeah. Have, having um, been acquired this year, I can agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've loved every minute of this year's it's acquisition. It's been wonderful for me. Yeah, yeah. It's been really positive uh, for me. And instead of point. instead of fewer jobs, it's actually offered more jobs. We've done more hiring because we have more resources to be able to do that. So it hasn't put WordPress people out of jobs. It's actually given more opportunities for people looking to be involved in corporations. 
Mm. And hire some positions that didn't make sense for some of the businesses at smaller scales. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, your, your position in particular, Michelle, something that the events calendar talked about a bunch and we couldn't justify a full-time role for it. But then when it was, you know, you mix five or six companies together and it's like, well, obviously we need somebody in this role. Uh, right. And so you, you start being able to create some jobs that that weren't really vital. You had to outsource them or contract somebody to do them or, or just not do it at all in some cases. Mm -hmm. The yeah. um, One of the things that was mentioned in the, I can't remember where, but he was talking about, Matt was talking about contributing to the project. And I think, I think this might've come out of the Q and A section. Somebody maybe posed the question, what would be the best way to learn WordPress and uh, Matt's response was that uh, he thought that contributing to the project was the best option there. I remember, uh, and I think I saw an article from Joe Casabona this week where he was sort of saying, actually, I'm not not entirely sure that's the best way. You know, maybe maybe actually using it uh, as opposed to contributing to it. But um, anyway, let's let's move on. That was a that was a really nice address that Matt gave, and uh, so yeah, so that's on the WP Tavern. But if you want to go and see this piece, which obviously I um, I showed you a minute ago, let me just put it on the screen. You can find on the poststatus.com website, post status team responses to the state of the word. And they've got a bunch of the people, Michelle at the top there, and then a bunch of other people um, giving their opinions. So you might want to go and read around that as well. Okay. Right, next piece then. This is again on WP Tavern. Apologies, it really is a WP Tavern festival this week, but uh, no no apologies really. This is Justin Tadlock. He's written a piece which I think is just really interesting because it kind of makes a shift. The, the article is called The Next Generation of WordPress Theme Authors Will Design from the Site Editor. And to cut a long story short, he's basically saying that he believes that if you're new to WordPress, it might be that you don't go and download some sort of IDE and work with a um, piece of software on your computer and then um, upload files and, you know, have those files in sync. It may be that in the future, what with all of the things that are going on with full site editing and what have you, that you're going to be doing everything inside of the, the WordPress admin area. And I just thought that was a really curious shift. Obviously, you're going to be able to, if you're looking at the screen, there's the options to create headers and footers and so on and so forth. And all of the different things will be available inside of WordPress. And if we are trying to get that new audience, that younger generation to be involved, maybe this is a positive benefit. I'm going to go to Anne first on this one. I don't know if you had a chance to read this particular article. Oh, hang on a minute. Yes, you did. Because look, there you are, right at the, right at the <laughs> yeah. top of the comments. I've forgotten about that. <laughs> it's like yeah. I obnoxiously commented very quickly. Yeah. 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 Um, so, what was your what were your thoughts on this? Do you see Do you see this as a goal? Is this an ideal? You know, if you've got like a a Chromebook or something, you could be operating on your website no matter where you are in the world without any additional software, just the browser. Yeah. No, I think like. Uh, pie in the sky or like, like a big picture thinking um, to not use uh, a term like that. I think there is very much, um, this is very much the future where things are headed. I think the key is going to be, my brain immediately goes to like the technical steps. That yeah, that's fine. So like exporting theme JSON is still like a work in progress. And now I just exporting theme JSON, but how do we make sure, you know, if you make changes to the templates, how do you keep custom templates? How could you convert custom templates to like a template for your theme? Like there's all sorts of things um to figure out as well as you know if you want to have multiple style variations can you build all of those within um, the site editor and what is the experience like when you link all of them together like there's a lot of interesting challenges there um but i do think this is very much going to be the future and i think the one big question mark in my mind is actually going to be the experience of you open the site editor and you're trying to build a block theme versus you open the site editor and you're building your site um, and how do you make a distinction between the two? So there is like another, I didn't link to this in the mm. comments, but there is an interesting um, proposal that's been you know, there for a bit about having a dedicated styles interface. So kind of like having um, a style guide where you can go in and edit like H1, H2, like it shows all these different blocks you can go through and while using the styles interface to actually build out um, what you want your site to look like in that sense. Um, but I'm, I'm personally very keen on this. And like, while there are a lot of these tools, um, to actually bridge us, bridge, bridge the gap while we get there. So I think like in a bit, we'll probably talk about theme JSON generator. Like there are some neat things that are probably going to come up for extenders in the long run. I definitely see this, um, as the future. And I think that that's, that's the hope. Um, there's also a lot to be figured out around how do you actually add in theme supports? So there's various things like, for example, on the site editor, you can't toggle on and off 
if you want uh, template editing mode. Like there's not a way to necessarily like add or remove support from the interface itself currently. Um, and I don't quite know how we'll expose that um, when creating a block theme, but I'm terribly excited by all of this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a whole mess of tools that you've got to, oh, there's a cat just <laughs> flew by. That was quite exciting. Um, there's a whole ton of tools that you need. And really, it, it feels like a laudable goal to have everything in one place, doesn't it? And, you know, if you if that can be achieved, that would be brilliant. But it was, it was a nice piece. Uh, I'll open it up to Zach and Michelle if they have anything to add on that. Well, I, I, think I that feel like so Anne really said everything. Yeah. <laughs> I know I know too much about this. <laughs> no, it's great. I love it. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. In which case, we'll move to the next one. I'm going to change the order a little bit because of what uh, Anne was just saying. I'm going to go to this one uh, first. Let me just again pop it on the screen. This is over again. It's a WP Tavern, but they're talking about a, a a really kind of fun little tool, which has been built by David. I'm going to say Guire. Does anybody know David? I think and... that's I think that's right. Okay. I could be okay. wrong. Yeah, David's <laughs> sure surname is spelled, yeah. David's surname is spelled G W Y E R. So I'm going with Guire. And the article is um, about his tool. It's called David Guire Teases Block Theme Generator App plans for a community of creators. And if you can see the screen, then that's pretty much all that you need to know. This is the, the capability to, to create, well, it's a block theme generator app. So guess what it does? It creates block themes. And, and it creates them by you just going through this really straightforward little panel of options where you tick boxes and you decide what you want the color to be like with selectors and things like that. And then it spits out all of the necessary bits and pieces that you need. You, at the minute, it's only got the capability as far as memory serves of, of throwing out the theme.json file, which is kind of all it needs. But I think there are plans to make it a much bigger uh, thing in the future. And this just feels so cool. It's the sort of thing that, okay, this is hard to do if you've never done it before. A big impediment to the new generation would be something just like this. That would be a real difficult thing for somebody who's never used, uh, I don't know, web publishing software or never come across JSON files or anything like that. This would be hard. And so little things like this seem like a really, really neat trick. The, the article goes into much more depth about how it all works and how the how the different classes and so on work. And these, Justin's got a few comments about how he thinks could, things could be done in the future. But I just thought this was a fabulous little tool, well worth sharing. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so, it's so neat to see people doing work like this. And I think, especially, I think it, it talks about this in the article, but the idea that you could like import in um, 2022's theme JSON and then from there tweak it as you want and then download it and then use it on your site. Like, I think there's a lot of neat um possibilities including like creating style variations so if you're a theme author and you want to create six different style variation files like to have people be able to switch through them when they install your theme in the future uh, this is a great way to do that with ease um, i also one of the things that's on my mind that rich tabor has written a good bit about is standardizing um things like typography and colors and how you communicate that as a way to make it easier to switch block themes so when you switch themes things aren't breaking and Justin Tadlock has written about this on the Tavern as well. And having tools like this that actually could help with standardization um, is a neat side benefit. <laughs> like as I was thinking about this, I was like, huh, if this was the main way people got started and there was a way to actually um, define these in a way that was like scalable and sustainable so you could switch between themes easily um, and not just break a bunch of stuff, this could be really powerful because that is still kind of uh, people who are block theme authors right now kind of have to pay attention to what's happening in order to make sure um, the experience is solid whenever switching between themes. So I'm I'm very keen to see some standardization happen in color naming and typography so that, that becomes easier. It's got a nice take in that it doesn't um, it doesn't mm -hmm. only offer you the option to click buttons and and what have you, but it, it would appear that once you get into the, the the weeds of the app, as you start to tick boxes, it then shows you what the output theme.json file will look like. And so, you know, if you're modifying things and you you change one thing, you can see it updating in real time. And so, you know, there the may be people that are learning how all this works through an app like this. And rather than trying to write it all from scratch or find you, YouTube tutorials that you can copy and paste from, <laughs> this seems like a nice way of being educated in how it works in a really simplistic way. It's lovely. 
when I see a tool like this, I'm a little bit struck by, I, I, I love seeing this, this kind of experimentation from people, the, you know, the playing around with the concepts, but I, I do kind of wonder like, who is this for, you mm -hmm. know, like, I, obviously it's for the person who wrote it and maybe that's enough. And oftentimes it is enough because that's, that's fun. But uh, if this was the kind of functionality that was really necessary, you would think that then it would get baked in right into the you know the previous article we just talked about was people building themes from the you know from the admin well the idea that you would go generate theme.json's in some external application like it, it it not being in wordpress seems odd almost right like it's not a it's not a plugin in wordpress you don't you don't get to see when you change that duotone color how it actually affects your theme it's all very conceptual at which point it's like Okay, awesome, love it. You could also just do that in your text editor, right? Like, mm. you, if it's not actually doing something graphically in WordPress, then I, I don't know. There, it feels very abstract to me. Which don't get me wrong, mm. I'm a dev from my background, and so I love abstract. But it does like I, I look at it, and go, who's who's this for? I feel like it's mainly for people who are trying to dabble and learn about block themes. Like I can imagine that's kind of like. The window so there's some people who are like no problem with the theme json file and they'll go in and they'll add the theme if right. they want to to make sure they're you know getting validated with what they're adding but i think there is also a subset of folks who are maybe they're site admins maybe they're wordpress designers and they want to get a sense of how to actually create with this and i think this is where um i am curious to see what new people enter in because i, I think we all have a very like this is the wordpress community <laughs> it's like there's probably a lot yeah. of people that we're not thinking of that i don't think of on a daily day you know day-to-day -day basis um, but yeah, to your point, I think this is kind of what I'm thinking of is like long term, this will be built into the editor where it'll be much easier. But in the in between period, we do actually need tools like this, because if we were to add all of this into core now, we'd have to support it for forever. And also it'd be very confusing yeah. <laughs> to end users if they're messing with theme. You know, it's like, how do we differentiate those experiences of building a theme versus building your site? Because um, it is a different, uh, you know, what you're going to toggle on and off is going to be quite different. So I think it, in the future, we'll see it baked in in some capacity. I always kind of forget that most of the people that deal with WordPress, and I, I by most, I mean probably like 90%, they've got no interest in, in all of the things that I'm curious about. And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really fascinated by this kind of thing. And most people don't want to touch it. They just want to log in, type some text, and then click publish and upload a few images and so on. They just want to use it. Um, and so it's, it is difficult to get out of your silo of, well, everybody should be able to do it this way and, and everybody should be doing it this way. And I think, I think it's it just curious that somebody's come along with a tool like this that makes this possible. I don't know, I don't know, Zach, um, what the, who the exact audience would be, but certainly. Also, worth, if no one uses not. it, that's, that's interesting. That's also right? interesting. Like if, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm all about like, people are like, oh, no one uses it. I'm like, cool. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> cool. helpful for me. Yeah. No that one is data. Anything? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually really like your, your framing and of it as like an educational tool. Cause that's, that's mm -hmm. actually really interesting to me of, cause people need to learn what is theme.json, what's controllable in there. And so as an educational tool, it's actually mm -hmm. really kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, you wonder things like this. Also, I think Justin, was it Justin that wrote this one? Yeah, it was Justin. I think he made the point that these third-party tools sometimes just, they just shine a light on where the project should be going. You know, if nobody uses it, well, then we know that this is not what anybody needs. But if everybody starts to use it and there's lots of chatter about it, then it's kind of, okay, this, this has got legs. Maybe we should start to think about putting something very much like this into core. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I thought it was a nice thing. Anything with that, Michelle? Well, I was just thinking, I mean, it's got me thinking. I'm not a, I'm not a dev, right? So I have a plugin in the repository because I wanted to learn. Like, and I, I used Hello Dolly, which is exactly what Matt wrote it for, so that people like me could be like, can I dabble? Is this something that I have an interest in? And I think that this is something that somebody like me who has, like, started to think about what that might look like could start to use to see... Like, what does it mean? And, and can I bridge that gap from being somebody who's um, a consumer and a designer into understanding a little bit more about the background and what goes into it to see if it's something I'm more interested in learning um, how to do? 
You can um, you can access this if you go to the website. It is themegen. So t h e m e g e n dot app. Uh, at the moment, you've you've got to enter an email link. I guess it's a work in progress, and presumably Justin got his hands on a sort of pre release version of the things. But if you're curious about this and you want to start dabbling and see what it can bring to you, themegen dot app, and put your email address in there, and uh, and hopefully you'll get some sort of communication around that right was this very much staying on the topic of 5.9 and patterns and blocks and all of that there's uh another piece on the tavern good grief um this is just thought this was worth mentioning just because of the the commitment that i'm seeing in this this is the alara block theme um i confess i had not heard of it until this came along this is just in tadlock's piece it says alara block theme promises a new pattern or design variation every week for the next year and i bet when Anne saw that she was like yes get in i know it's like, um, so cool <laughs> yeah yeah um so this is now let me get this right so the the theme is called Alara and it's by uh, the developer who's called Andrew Starr. I hope I'm getting all this right. Most of this is from memory. Uh, oh yeah, see it on the screen. Um, and their developer company is called UXL Themes and they promise that literally every single week, I don't know if that means on a Sunday, every Sunday, or it means, you know, aggregated, there'll be 52 over the year. They're going to release something new into the community. Now we could stare at what he's already done um, he's got some novel ways of showing how things are new just by sort of amending the, the markup in the text so that there's some sort of little star next to next to the new bits because apparently there's no way of surfacing those at the moment. But it's just the idea that somebody has put a flag in the sand saying, okay, I believe in this. For the next year, we're going to put out 52 n- new concepts based around this one theme so that you guys can share it. And, and I just thought this was totally... Well, I'm applauding them, basically. I just think this is fabulous. And I didn't know if anybody else wanted to get in, but I suspect Anne does. I'll just say I think it's a great way to kind of lead by example and give inspiration. Um, Tammy Lister is a designer in the community, and she um, was releasing a pattern every day for a month on like patternspiration.com or something like that. So just seeing what people are doing, I think, will really help um, the blank page effect. (laughs) Where you're like, wait, what can I do right now? And I think people like this who really lead the way and are challenging themselves to to be truly creative um, and use the tools at hand um, really help others um, join in on the fun. Like I often have this where as a the photography where I see someone take a photo in a new way. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like I got really into taking a photo in the, my side view uh, <laughs> mirror of my car <laughs> for a bit. Cause it would have this weird effect and, you know, things like that, where um, I would never think to do that if I hadn't um, seen other photographers do that. And I think we'll see the same um, with theme authors when they, they see experiments like this and dedication like this. It's going to be quite interesting because at the moment we're at that point where there isn't too much of this happening, but you kind of feel like the seesaw is about to tip. And at some mm-hmm. point in the near future, we won't be able to keep up with all that's happening. And that'll be a that'll be a lovely place to be in. But at the moment, this sort of stuff is making news because it's so different in a future mm-hmm. where there are 10 gazillion patterns in the pattern directory we, we we might be like no it's too confusing we need a better way to search and filter it but but for now we're any already news running like into this that is, a little bit yeah 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 we are getting there <laughs> but uh, yeah i would agree with you and it's just nice to to be shown what different people are doing and if i can i'd love to call out something that this theme does that i think is really cool is they have some full page patterns so they, i think they have two of them if i'm not mistaken from the article and one of the things that i think it's linked to in this article is that um eventually having starter page templates or starter page patterns, like whatever that might look like. Um, Yeah, if you look at the starter page template system, there's like, I would still like WordPress to officially adopt the starter page template system. It's like, yes, (laughs) I can imagine that in the future with patterns in order to have easier content creation and helped, you know, back to our original conversation about new folks coming in. Kind of like Instagram has different filters, like if you can swap through different types of content when you're starting um, your site without having to install a plugin or whatever, I think it will go a really long way. And I'm keen, I'm glad to see a theme um, providing that functionality already. Yeah, the, um, I, I do, I also share your, 
like of the fact that when somebody puts it all together and makes a page out of it, it does sort of, it's like you're hanging your coat on the, the coat hanger. You can see what its purpose was, whereas all of the little, the little rows and the little patterns, which are, you know, for a one particular purpose, it might be for reviews or a hero or whatever it might be. It's hard to see and feel what they would look like. And, and this does that really well. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, Zach, Michelle, anything, or shall we move on? It's, I don't have anything more. Okay, no, same. All right, let's move on then. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to mention this one, but I can't remember who it was. Just a moment ago, mentioned Rich Tabor. Uh, who was it? Was it you, Anne? That was me. Was it you? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see this piece? He put a piece together called "Building WordPress Block Themes with the New Gutenberg Pattern Block." I, I didn't really have anything to add, but I just thought I'd raise it and put it in the. The show notes if it's a more. very i recommend looking at it if you have some experience with block themes otherwise it's gonna sound uh like gibberish like it's very it's extremely meta like i think he said you think he owns yeah he that makes the point beginning. that it's yeah it's <laughs> yeah. yeah he does actually make that point doesn't he a thing within a thing within a thing within a thing that represents refer <laughs> references itself yeah something like i had that. to read it twice to like really like wrap my head around i was like okay yes i understand now what he's, what he's saying i, I read it, <laughs> it twice is, and is still crazy. didn't understand it <laughs> It just shows. Okay, I'll I'll put that one in the show notes, but I don't suppose we're going to dwell on yeah, it. Do but it. Um, next one is more tavern. This time it's Justin again. This is ten up. I really like this actually. I, I, probably maybe it isn't as newsworthy as I thought it was, but I I don't really have a media kit as such. Mm. I mean I tell people what colors I'd prefer them to use. And we use the Montserrat font and things like that. That's about all that we do. But I just thought this was a really curious little um, little plugin, which has been released by their company, Tenop. I'm sure we've all heard of them. They've got this media kit uh, plugin, which you can download. It's on version, version 1.0. And essentially, it just allows you to create a dead, simple media kit page. And uh, there you go. If you're looking at it on the screen, I just thought it was it's just quite a nice, quite a nice option. And as we are going to be saying forever, it comes along with patterns. So you've got a whole bunch of patterns which fit this motif perfectly. And it just sort of demonstrates you can use patterns inside any kind of thing. In this case, media kit. You know, it might be that you've got a dog walking company. Well, we need some dog walking company patterns. But for now, I just thought this was a really curious and interesting little little project. I think I'm going to use it. That's probably why I'm mentioning it. Okay. I love things like this that make you not have to invent how you want something to look. It's like That's I hadn't right. thought of like you can you can Google media kit and they're all going to look different. And then you have to try to piece together from everybody's different media kits what you like as opposed to this where it's like start here. This is nice. Just start here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. It goes that blank page effect that Anne just mentioned. Yeah. Like it, this is this is a perfect kind of solution to those kinds those sorts Absolutely. of things. Absolutely. I feel the blank page thing really badly. It really actually gets me. And I feel that that the, the the way that Gutenberg works at the minute, it really truly is a blank page, isn't it? You know, there's just a big white thing there. And uh, so things like this where you can just click a button and you're off to the races. You can make a start. I think we'll see more and more of this. And thank you, Tenop, for putting this out there and letting us all use mm -hmm. it. That's great. My 12-year-old son. Uh, came up to me the other day. We're moving away from WordPress for a bit. My 12-year-old son came up to me this week and he said, Dad, what is Log4j? And I thought, Amazing. good <laughs> grief. What? He plays Minecraft. Um, and so obviously mm. this this had gone into the, the, the sort of comments of the people that he was moving around with. I am not clever enough to know why this is catastrophically bad. But the fact that this thing made it onto domestic news outlets, so for example, it was featured in the BBC, it was featured in you know regular newspapers where they are not interested in technology per se. Um, I don't know if this caught any of you out this week or anything that I you were busy with. I know. I mean, I dug into it, but like Zach, do you know, you might know more than I do. <laughs> Uh, I'll admit that I don't. I don't know a lot. Uh, the beauty okay. of working for a hosting company means oh, you that think about uh, <laughs> we very much get to put our hands up. Uh, we, we, you know, they gave us some scripts to run. The events calendar has I don't know fifty servers or something. So we had to go like check mm -hmm. to make sure it wasn't there. And thankfully, it wasn't there on any of our servers, which was lovely. Uh, it's mostly like a like a Java package, but also it's sometimes used by Apache. So it ends up being very, very broadly used, uh, maybe not directly, but indirectly by 
lots and lots and lots of people. So I think the biggest, I mean, it's a big vulnerability, but also just the sheer install base of the package is, is kind of what um, pushes it out of our little tech bubble and into kind of the, the general consciousness, like, like happens once in a while with tech problems. Yeah. I also read something about how you can't necessarily tell when it's been uh, taken advantage of. So based on like the actual vulnerability that one of the things that was coming up was that you couldn't necessarily see if it, it truly had been, if you had been hacked. And so that I think was one of the scariest things that I read um, as well as, you know, hospitals probably use this small companies. Um, like it's one of those things where if you're a team of two people, how are you actually going to keep on top of this? Um, mm -hmm. And that, that was the part that really freaked me out. That made me kind of uh, dig into it a bit more. Um, I have a weird interest in security. I used to work on the vault press plugin. So there's some of this stuff was like, like, Ooh, how did they, <laughs> like, how does this work? What is this yeah. lockboard J thing? And like learning that it is like a, logging tool for security and like how bad it gave so much access and then didn't leave a trail. And that part to me is really scary. <laughs> like if you, if you don't have a trail that you can follow and you don't even know if someone's gotten in and they might've installed a back door, where do you even begin to know like where they went? Um, and I think that's like the, the part that, that caught my attention. So, and how? I think the biggest thing was that it's open source. So it's like, this is why, you know, we need to take care of our open source projects. Um, and this is why, you know, having people who do security and WordPress, and I think Matt called them out in a great way in the state of the word, um, but having more folks involved in that side of things. I think Matt and the side, Max in the sidebar is making a, a great point as well, which is that we often miss mm -hmm. how much of what we rely on on the internet is, and, and I don't know, I don't know this particular one, but might be, you know, two guys in, uh, in Milwaukee yeah. or something, right? Like it's not... <laughs> um, it's not always a big project, even if it's got huge, huge deployment or, or whatever. So that's, uh, we. it's easy to forget that. I think you're mm -hmm. being prescient there. I, I don't think it's in Milwaukee, but I think it is two guys. I think it's in Nebraska or something yeah, like that. Something like that. Oh, but, yeah, something like that. Yeah, you were pretty close. Well, truly, okay. yeah. yeah. But they... Um, like that, that meme is like, it's actually real. <laughs> yeah, they do this thankless <laughs> job. And presumably most of the time, there's nothing that needs changing. But these are the two people again forgive me if i've got this wrong but these are the two people who, who maintain this little bit of the internet and um and apparently they've now been sponsored by who knows who but they've they've got a they've got a budget now of something like sixteen thousand dollars a year to keep this this little piece of the internet going and it, it does kind of make you think about how resilient the whole thing is because you know imagine god forbid the whole the bus scenario where these two guys are sadly hit by a boss and disappear, then suddenly a problem like this became, becomes infinitely more difficult to fix. And my understanding is that essentially you could set, you could more or less send anything into this and it would interpret it. And so you could send whatever nonsense you wanted. So even a, even a benign comment in a Minecraft, towards a Minecraft server could then be executed. And, and obviously at that point you're in trouble. Yeah, just absolutely fascinating but it felt to me like people with great chops in this part of the internet were were rightfully panicking you know that i saw things come out from word fence on i can't remember but it wasn't in their normal cycle of emailing they were basically saying look if you have anything that might be impacted by this go and get it fixed now so two things that i want to say about that as somebody who's not into development and all of that is number one um, those two men should never be on the same plane, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Air or Force boss. One, Air Force Two. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about that. The second thing is, if you want to scare people, put neon code on a black background and then show it from an angle with some kind of shadowy figure in the front, and we all go, "Oh my God, we've been hacked!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh, marketing that... has done its job on that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, I'm curious, with your 50 servers, how, how much time did you have to de devote in this last week? Even though you, there was no mitigation required, what, what was the amount, what would you estimate, roughly speaking, was the amount of time just lost to this? So thankfully, some people created some really great scripts. Like, again, the internet coming together to just make situations like this more tolerable. I, 
I think our, our head of engineering, Matt Batchelder, I think it took him maybe an hour or two for him yep. to just, you know, churn through all those servers, run the scripts, confirm that we were good. Uh, you know, if he had found something, it would have turned into a much bigger thing. Yeah. Uh, and certainly our Nexus managed hosting team with their, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of servers, they spent a lot more time. You know, I think it was pretty much the the topic of the week for our for our hosting side of the business. Um, it was at some point, I think, within the last 365 days where the the NHS in the UK, the, uh, quite a little bit of their infrastructure was taken down. Probably was a little bit longer than a year, actually. And it, it does make you think we are so re- reliant upon this stuff working. We just fully expect that, you know, your medical records will be held securely and safely or your financial records or whatever else it, it may be. And, and yet something like this comes along and really... <laughs> Dear me. Anyway, we'll wait. I'm sure there's another <laughs> boss coming around the corner to uh, to frighten us in the next few days. Anyway, if you haven't come across this story, recommendation would be go and look for Log4J because there may be things that need patching at your part of the world. Okie dokie. Let's go to the next one. This every year excites me. I love this. And and I don't know if you've had a chance to read this, but when we get to the bottom, no. I think you're going to be tickled by this. So this is Specky Boy. <laughs> if you come across his uh, his post before, at the end of the year, he does a, a sort of the Grumpy Designers 2022 preview where he thinks about all the things which are going to happen. And, uh, and it's very tongue in cheek. And he talks about um, how AMP is going to just take off and it's going to be fulfilling and excellent and everything will work. And in order to make this happen, um, Google, who've been, pe- you know, who've been found with their hand in the till, shall we say, they're going to introduce dial-up mode initiated on Google search. And every time you do a search, Google are going to enforce a 10-second delay before the search <laughs> results come. Well, that was quite nice. Um, and the 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 nice bit all to do with WordPress at the bottom. I just think this is brilliant. Inspired writing. Um, in He thinks that in 2022, somebody is going to modify the full site editing of WordPress and they're going to do competitor site editing. And this plugin, this plugin (laughs) will allow you access on an administrator level to some (laughs) random other website. You won't get to choose. You'll just be able to go in and deface a competitor's (laughs) website. Just thought that was lovely. Competitor site. Like, yeah. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, the plugin oh. acquisition plugin, which uh, allows you to, <laughs> which allows you to, once installed, you put in your credit card details, and uh, and then it randomly assigns you another plugin, and from that moment on, you own it. <laughs> Yeah, this is so good. It's so good. Yeah, oh, Eric is hysterical. He's he's brilliant. Do you know who who this is? It's, it's at the top. I said Eric Karkovac. Yeah. Do do you, do you, do you know him like on a personal level? I I haven't met him face to face, but I have been following him, and um, he's contributed to the Big Orange Heart Coloring Book as well. Yeah. And yeah. so I I was speaking with him a little bit um, in DMs. He just seems he's a stand up fellow. That's, that's for sure. I I just think stuff like this makes my day. I just thought yeah. that was absolutely priceless. You gotta have fun with this kind of stuff. One time for April Fools, Vault Press did a restore via uh, mail carrier pigeon like as a <laughs> <laughs> so it was like we'll restore your site in 300 days like i'll see if i can find the post How it was really funny pigeons. <laughs> oh, this re- was like seven years ago also like we would never do that now like automatically i don't think that would fly but yeah was, we thought it was funny and it was back when like you know anyone could write on the vault press blog so i was like writing random stuff and, oh yeah. i love it yeah re- restore so <laughs> three and a half inch floppy <laughs> every year, every year, Taylor Walden suggests that for April Fool's Day, give pretends that we have a new plugin for um, donate by fax. And every year, Matt Cromwell says no because there will be people who will think we're serious. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, that was it. Was yeah. we were going back and forth about what to do, and I was like, "What well, we have to pick something unrealistic, or else we're really, really going to get requests." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If we don't, yeah. Like, send us your CDs. It's not going to fly because I've literally had. <laughs> People yeah. send me CDs of yeah. changes they want. Yes, exactly. <laughs> many, I, I, many, many years ago, me and a coworker, when we were working for a university, uh, decided to put because we ran the student portal, and we decided to put on the student portal on April Fools that we that the university decided to change the mascot from the panther to a platypus, and we like <laughs> he he was a fairly 
fairly skilled designer and so he did up a whole like mascot sort of thing and put it on the site and and it was probably i don't know 20 minutes into the day we got a call from the president of the university because Ooh. the alumni office was being overwhelmed with phone calls which we were pretty happy about it and but she asked <laughs> to make her a t-shirt so we felt we felt pretty good about about the result that, there was this lovely non-tech story the, the, the bbc have this program called panorama i don't know if it's still on but it's a very very highbrow um look at politics um and the state of the country you know it's properly in-depth you don't watch this unless you're very interested in the state of affairs and the, back in the sort of 70s it happened to air on um, on April Fools. I don't know how we've got into April Fools, but anyway, here we go. Um, and they <laughs> they they got into a story that they filmed this story of of how the spaghetti harvest in Italy was uh, failing because there was a blight <laughs> on the spaghetti trees. And, and they had they had pictures of people literally reaching into trees, and there was there was spaghetti. It was almost like the I've fruit of the tree, and it was it was in some way sort of toxic. It had been marked, and oh, people no. were devastated. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So, I love. I wonder if had a, a shortage of pasta after that. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. That was it. There was going to be oh, a shortage. run on pasta. A run on yeah. spaghetti because the trees were failing. I just thought they had gone down in That's the annals so of history. That one, yeah, that was good. Okay, from frivolous to quite serious, actually, um, I want to put this message up. This mm. is uh, Orange Heart. Um, if, if what we're about to say in any way touches you and you feel that you can make a difference here, bigorangeheart.org forward slash sponsor. Um, Michelle, is it all right if I hand this one to you to talk about? Because I know yeah, that you're more close to it than I am probably. We are in a very, as if you don't know, I am the um, board president for Big Orange Heart and have been volunteering there for a few years now. And we are at a very um, difficult point in our history right now in that we do not have enough sponsorship to carry us into uh, 2022. And so um, I have a hard stop for the next half hour because I have a board meeting where we need to make some difficult decisions as to whether or not we can we can continue into 2022 and if we can how far we can actually go uh, because we have only one sponsor confirmed for 2022 at this point um and and sponsorship we we've you know we we try to raise around two hundred thousand dollars every year to keep everything going the way that we need to and without that we cannot afford to continue to run and we have, like I said, one sponsor. We're, we're looking for eight corporate sponsors at $25,000 a year. 5000 of that is technically sponsorship. Because we are a U.S. charity now, 20000 of it is considered a donation. Uh, and But without that, we won't be able to continue to move forward. We do amazing things. We raised over $5,000 just on, on Giving Tuesday this year. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't do that every day. We can't ask people to give to that level every day. Uh, we don't have the, the, the people power to do that. We also um, can't rely on everybody just opening up their own wallets to do it. But if every single person who is impacted by it could give five or ten dollars even in one in one fell swoop we could raise that kind of money but without the corporate sponsorship it really makes it difficult to know that we can go forward um it's dire and and i don't i'm not given to hyperbole so um this is dire this is this is a resource that has literally saved lives i cannot um tell you who because it's not announced to me but people who have reached out, who have been at the level of, of suicidal in the remote community, in the WordPress community, have turned around that decision and, and chosen life and chosen to move forward because Big Orange Heart was there at those crisis points to help somebody find the, the resources that they need to move forward in a positive way. We have lost people. We have lost people last year, right before, um, actually this past, this year, right before the first WordFest this year, um, we lost somebody in the community to suicide. And, and it was somebody that I had had one-on-one -on -one conversations with. It was devastating. And to think that that can happen in spite of having an organization like this, but knowing how many other lives have been saved because, um, because Big Orange Heart exists and how, and, and not even at the level of suicide, let's say, but at the level of we 
can impact each other positively. We can help each other have, you know, flourishing careers and get through difficult times, even if it isn't as dire as, as looking at ending, ending people's lives at their own lives. But um, yeah, I, I don't know how to say it any, any more succinctly. I don't know how to say it. I don't know why my video just went out, but I also, um, I don't know how to, um, to make it better. I don't know how we can improve things like that. Um, you know, without, I don't know what's, what else to say. It is dire and we really yeah. do need the assistance. Just so that you know, Michelle, we can still hear every word that you said, but your video has gone. If you, if you feel that you want to just refresh, that's fine. Although yeah, we seem to have a different angle. That's good. Uh, yeah. The, the curious, one of the curious things about the, about Big Orange Heart is that the very people that they have done great work with often, they simply can't be you know, it's not like you can put a testimonial out there because this no. is not the kind of thing that you can celebrate out loud. But just be reassured. I mean, I know Dan maybe really, really well. This genuinely makes a difference to people. And I feel it would be a great shame if by this time next year something like this simply didn't exist and it does appear at this point that they really need the the sponsorship coming from organizations that have got the deeper pockets shall we say the ones that are able to to mm -hmm. sponsor with the big packages um michelle just mentioned twenty five thousand dollars is kind of what they're looking for but that covers a gigantic amount of content there's don't take my word for it. Go to the website. It's bigorangeheart.org forward slash sponsor. It's a lot more than just the community. There, there's lots of events going on during the year, both in person and the the online word fests, which have grown in popularity since they started. They're now giant events. A um, couple of those each year and loads and loads of things going on in the background. Lots of work being done. And whilst they may not be uh, blowing their own trumpet all the time, it's incredibly helpful to those of us who needed it. Hmm. Can I add something real quick just related to this? Because this, as we're talking about this, it reminds me a lot of kind of when we talk about things like Log4j, where it's a super serious security vulnerability, like mental health is really serious. This is kind of the way we can take care of the folks who are taking care of the internet. Um, so maybe it's not always hit by a bus, but the mental health is a real thing. Um, I struggle with my own stuff, both with depression, anxiety, suicide ideation, like there's a lot of things that um, I write about personally and, and share about personally in organizations like this. Um, it's really critical when we, when we think about sustainability of the internet and building an open an open future. So don't forget to, to think about the brains behind the operation because yeah. um, how it feels uh, to be on the internet, especially during a pandemic um, is very tough and having community from afar um, you never know what small action might be able to help someone and to have such a big collective. Um, it's a lot of small actions that add up. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the work you're doing there. And I'll do everything I can at my end to advocate. Um, and I appreciate you all bringing this up because this is very near and dear to me and um, something that needs to to not be in such a dire state, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ed. So, yeah. Uh, anything to add there, Zach, or should we move on? No, just uh, it's it's super important. Uh, I hope that I hope that Big Orange Heart's able to find the sponsorships they need. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? So don't take the message from this though that it's only the corporate stuff. If you want to go and donate your smaller yes. uh, donation, you can go to forward slash donate. So Big Orange Heart forward slash donate and make your contribution. And um, yeah, let's let's see. And on the fun can... side of that, there's their their coloring book. I just got a copy of that uh, yeah. last oh, week. Great. It's very yeah. very cool. Uh, yeah. you know that's okay. that's a way to give back. That was that the, was a project that I I suggested that I throw crazy ideas at Dan maybe and that one stuck and I was like oh okay great <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot of fun to to put together we uh, WP builds we a stupid endeavor but it was a bit of fun we I we raised it. a little bit of money for them this year the, the WP builds WordPress awards for 2021 are now officially over this was. You could literally buy your way into winning an award. Uh, if you donated $10 to Big Orange Art, you could nominate yourself to win whatever category you wanted. And so here we go. I'll just run through some of these. The, uh, the one, one, one right there out of the out of the gate. That's right. There was me. The best podcast called WP Builds was won by 
WP <laughs> Builds. Uh, the most unique display advertising this year was won by Jeff Chandler. Well done. The best WordPress tennis player, <laughs> Jamie Marsden. He really kicked this whole thing off. Michelle Frechette wins for being actually triplets, masquerading as one person. The best WordPress boomer was Bob Don, the least clean that. member of the WordPress community. That was me. Um, and Eric Karkovitz, we've just been talking about him, the best WordPress writer who points out things how they ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Uh, the my most favorite, though, I don't, I don't remember who it was, but somebody put a serious one in there, and then afterwards they were like, oh, man, I didn't realize this was tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was actually Daniel. Daniel should yeah. That's not okay, my we'll, directory of WordPress we'll live get what, We'll get to that one. Yeah, the, the most traitorous podcast host in the WordPress community was Paul Lacey. <laughs> Bravo, Paul. Like Poor it. Paul. Uh, the best known, he nominated himself for that. <laughs> the, <laughs> the best known collector in the WordPress community was Leanne Milton. Um, who else have we got? The best mitten knitter in the WordPress community. Anyway, the point is it goes on. There's loads more. Thank you to all of you for uh, having a bit of fun with that. We'll probably run this next year, hopefully. Big Orange Heart still being around. I hope so too. And, um, and we'll get some more names on that list. But yeah, a totally, totally ridiculous poll that you could buy yourself into winning. So uh, thank you, you to you anybody. Raised, you raised shy of $1,000 for the No. Campus. Yeah. It was, really? It was wonderful. You did, yeah. Oh, man and all it took was an online form what fun that is That's, really cool yeah i enjoyed doing that okay the what else have we got we're very short of time we've got about 12 minutes left let's skip to some random stuff i just want to point people out this just came across this little tool this week just thought it was kind of nice it's called keyframes.app and uh, it allows you to create animations in a in a gui you can create some look at this cool little shadow thing that moves around the planet. I thought that was quite nice. Uh, and a color picker. Anyway, the best bit for me was this create an animation tool. You literally click a button. There's a timeline at the bottom and you can create some little 3D that animations. Is really cool. Isn't it cool? It's like you can't, I, ugh, can't awesome. not have fun on this page. Yeah, we need to get this in Gutenberg or like at least experimenting more with this kind of stuff. I've seen some people build some plugins that can add animations within, but this is like a far, I'm like, oh, I can't wait until you can mess around. With yeah, 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 yeah. You, we'll get off the call and you can uh, you can start. So key, <laughs> keyframes.app, three little tools, and they plan, mm -hmm. it says, to build some more. Um, and they've got the coolest UR, uh, email address. It's hello at hotdi.sh, hot dish, which I just thought was kind of fun. But you can go and check that out. The other one I want to mention is that uh, if you are a WooCommerce user, but you're looking for an alternative, you want to find something different. We had these guys on the podcast the other day, actually. A guy called Kelly Muro um, is creating this thing called North Commerce, and he is about to launch it in beta and if you get in now, you can get a lifetime price. I think it's three hundred and fifty dollars, and they're gonna basically give you the, the 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 full Monty forever and ever and ever. Amen. Um, go to northplugins.com forward slash north dash commerce dash beta uh, if you want to find out about that. If, it looks pretty good, I have to say. I'm quite quite beguiled by it. And I oh, an Ann. Anne wanted me to mention this. Was it you, Anne? You threw this at us. Yeah, I just thought this was fun. Like That's Riyadh, good. I'm pretty sure it was Riyadh, mm -hmm. just was like, let's see how long. I, I think he took spent an hour and a half just rebuilding the Kubrick. And this is a good example of what we were talking about earlier with building a theme in the site editor. Um, so it has a cool screenshot. And I just thought it was kind of like a cool, weird throwback with new tools. Um, I don't know. It just seemed like a fun a fun thing for some WordPress, deep word, WordPress nerdery, you know? <laughs> I've got to ask, who, who, which of us was using this? I I vaguely remember using it very briefly before finding a much better alternative. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. definitely had Kubrick Live on my website for like a week. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing this all over the internet. And at that point, I didn't know about CMSs really at all. And I was just like, why the hell does everybody want to use this exact same design? You know, I mean, come on, do something, do something a bit original. Then, of course, it's like when you see blogger blogs now, you're that, like, right, oh, dear. Like, right. yeah. And I also remember seeing the little Joomla fav icon everywhere and thinking, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Why are all these sites? Why have they all got the same little fav icon? Anyway, that is kind of cool. Who put this together? 
Riyadh, I'm pretty oh, okay. sure. Yeah, yeah. Matthias, I think, tweeted it out and yeah, he tagged Riyadh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, right, I think that's all that we've got time for this week, to be honest. Well, uh, I, will I, will, I wanted to give a shout out too, though, that I... Sure. As a result of the things that I learned at State of the Word about duo tones and things that I hadn't played with yet, I actually wanted to launch Community is Poetry because I've been doing some poetry nights where I just tweet out if anybody wants like a limerick or a haiku or a roast about them or a compliment that they can just, you know, line up. And I spent two hours one night giggling hysterically as I was writing these things about people. And I, and somebody said, you should make a book. And I'm like, I don't want to publish a book, but I'll put together a website. So I didn't want to have to like get hosting and do all of those crazy things. So I just built a dot com, a WordPress.com site. Um, community is poetry.wordpress.com. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's Duotone. And so I didn't do it very well. I just went to the black and white basically, but I took my color photo and it turned into black and white. And I just linked up all of the different silliness that I created that evening um, so that I can do it again and continue to, um, to tag people, uh, you know, about, so, I mean, you can see what it looks like there. If you click any one of those, you can see what I wrote about people. Um, on, on the bottom, yeah. Well, there's there's the oh, original. Oh, I clicked yeah. the wrong thing. Hold on. Hold yeah, on it doesn't matter. Um, if you scroll down from there, you can see as well. But I'll, everywhere that says their name, that's their their tweet, their Twitter handle. Got so, um, yeah, I don't remember what I wrote for any particular person, but um, they all open. Yeah. So this guy, I don't <laughs> know so him. Cool. So I wrote a little limerick based on what I could see from anybody's profile, and if they had links <laughs> to their website. Um, I discovered that I'm too kind to roast people because people were like, that's lame. <laughs> and then I had to like dig deep. And and one person, I didn't know them at all. And I went to their website and I saw their, their I saw their website and I said, well, I guess your website is as exciting as I could expect from a developer. Um, things like that, because I finally, <laughs> I had to learn to dig a little deeper and pull out the fire. Um, there you go. That's the one. <laughs> the bio on your homepage. Yeah, so. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well done you you know that award that i just awarded you for being three yeah. people i take it back it's four isn't it there oh. are four of you you know where do you find the time michelle it is amazing oh, yeah. it's it was Quite. a friday night and i was i live alone and the cats could care less about poetry so i just tweeted it so Very <laughs> i'll be doing nice. it again soon but this was it's... fun and you know using wordpress.com having a wordpress.com um site allows you to go in and play with some of the things without having to have a test spin up a test site all of those things because they tend to be there you know you can use them there and so um it's really even if you are a .org person and you're a self-hosted person spin up a, a wordpress.com site and play with some of the things that are there because there's some pretty exciting stuff happening let me get you the url one more time it's community is poetry.wordpress.com and you can go and see what michelle's doing over there what fun honestly yeah, I'm, uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun I'm, I'm most impressed right okay now we often plumb but i think we are about to plumb the, the this is just off the scale naff but i'm going to do it anyway at the end of the uh, at the end of the show we always wave <laughs> We always do a bit of this so that everybody can like download the sorry the the album art can be you know seen with us all waving. But this year in Christmas, <laughs> we've all got to try and line our faces. Hang on a minute, right? Wait a sec. Left a bit, right a bit. Are you all in? Are you all in? Now wave. Give it a wave. Give it a wave. That is so cheesy. <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever seen. Thank you so much. Let me take that off. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, that was so bad. Right. Good for that. I'm standing at this point. So I was ended like, I gotta... 2021 for this week in WordPress on, well, uh, scraping the barrel there. But uh, thank you so much, Zach. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you'll feel that you want to come on another time. I really appreciate yeah, your time. Yeah, thank you Thanks so for much. Having me. You're very welcome. Michelle, obviously, we will definitely Always. be seeing you next year. And yeah. Anne, I hope that we'll be seeing you next year. I would love you back on. Well. Yeah, thank you so <laughs> it much. It was great gonna... to meet you, Anne gonna say yeah, goodbye yeah. thanks for joining us if you are watching this or listening to this really appreciate it and uh, hopefully you'll have a, a nice holiday period and see you in the new year take it easy